Hi, everybody. It's Julie Ebersol for EllenHudson.com, and welcome to Hello Monday. Today, I'm going to be sharing how I like to do a watercolor swirl. I love to watercolor. It's probably my favorite coloring medium of all. And I've got a piece of Canon XL watercolor paper here on a nonstick craft sheet. And I've also got my Kudatake Gonzai Tombi watercolor pans. I love these watercolor pans for doing large expanses of watercolor. And I'm using a Pentel Aquash. I have a little paint palette there I like to use. It's porcelain but you can use an acrylic block or a piece of acetate if you need to, to thin it down, to thin your paint down. And I just started by taking my paintbrush and I hold it straight up and down and I just make an easy swirly motion and coming uh, outward towards the edges, outer edges of the paper. And I like to use that as a guide for then broadening my stroke. So the initial swirl is pretty sad looking. It's kind of uh, skinny. <laughs> And it doesn't look like much, but you use that as a guide to start widening your strokes. So now I'm using my paintbrush to actually sweep the color around. I'm adding a little bit more water, a little bit more paint. And because the surface is fairly wet from these paint strokes, it allows that color to move. And then I'm going to fade it out and use more water and less paint as I get towards the outer edges to have it fade out and look realistically like a water swirl. And I love this color. It's kind of an aqua color in that set. I love the 36 color uh, Tombi set because it's got like all the colors <laughs> and I have to have all of them, of course. So um, it's a great set. Now you could custom mix your colors to get a similar tone, but I like having the whole rainbow at my disposal. So now I've got this done and I did a couple of C strokes in there to kind of continue shaping my swirl. And then I'm impatient. So one of the reasons why I like to work on a clipboard is then I can hold it up and heat set it quickly without warping my cutting mat down below. Now I've taken some images from the Inner Mermaid set and lined them up on my mini Misty. And I've got another quarter sheet of Canson watercolor paper here and I'm just going to use an anti-static patch because I'm going to be water uh, heat embossing these images and I figured out because I like to save space and not waste anything that all of these images I could actually stamp them twice on a quarter sheet of cardstock I know I'm a frugal stamper so <laughs> So I inked up with the VersaFine Claire ink in that nocturne color, which is a nice deep black. You could also use VersaFine Onyx black or Brilliance Graphite black, whatever, pigment black ink. And then I'm going to put clear embossing powder over the top. And I've got that big hunkin' jar by WOW. I use a lot of clear embossing powders, so I like the big jar. Poured that over the top. Make sure everything's coated nicely. It's going to be gritty and sandy. Preheat your heat gun for about 30 seconds and then come in and start watching the magic happening. I'm about three inches away from my image here and I move in closer as I need to and then I back off as soon as it melts and gets nice and shiny. And then I'm ready to start watercoloring. And here you can see I rotated the paper and stamped those images again because there was enough space to do that. So I've got my palette here just in case I need it to water down any of the paints, but um, I think I ended up going just straight paint and just using uh, the paper itself. I did coat the mermaid first with some clear water and then I'm dropping the color in and then pushing it and moving it along because you do have those embossing lines there that kind of tend to trap the color in certain spots. So I'm brushing over the top and you can be vigorous when you're doing this because you're not going to hurt anything. Uh, you've got those embossing lines are pretty sturdy and hold up well to that paintbrush going over the top. So I'm just going to town here and not hesitating at all. And I like to add variations of color. I very rarely do flat color when I color something in. So I'm using kind of that aqua color and I got that deeper uh, forest green color to bring in some teal because when it starts to dilute with the water and combine with the aqua and the green, you just get some great variations of color going on here. And I don't mind if there's a couple of wet spots and darker spots. I do not like perfect watercolor. I like it to be uneven and painterly looking. So that's the look I always go for when I paint. And it makes me feel better because I don't have to worry about staining inside the lines. <laughs> So once I'm done uh, with that, and I'm actually using the large brush, I'm going to move on to some of the smaller images. Uh, you can scale down and use the medium Pentel Aquash. Uh, there's also a fine tip Pentel Aquash for tinier images um, so that uh, enable you to get in those tighter spots. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same technique. I'm just adding a wash of clean water and then dropping the color in. And in some cases, you'll actually see me uh, like on this shell right here, I'm actually allowing the color to kind of move and work outward and then I'm going to push it and help it along a little bit. And then I decided, you know what, this is just too intense. 
I should have watered it down, but I didn't. So how am I going to remedy that? Well, I will dab off the excess water and paint off my brush and then come in with a drier brush to lift out that excess color and excess water and then uh, continue pushing it around until I'm satisfied with the color and the deepness of color that I have right there. So that's another way to work with your watercolor um, in case you get too much color on there. It's always easier to add more than it is to take away, but as long as it's wet and you got some paper towel and you work with your brush there by drying it to suck up the stuff. It kind of works like a vacuum and sucks it up. Um, it'll come out okay. So now I've got everything ready. I went ahead and used the coordinating dies for the Inner Mermaid set to die cut out the tail and the shells. And I'm going to start building the card front here on my swirly background. And I did trim it out already on my paper trimmer. So it's a quarter inch uh, smaller than it was before. It was an A2 four and a quarter by five and a half. Now it's four inches by five and a quarter. And I decided to use some of those thin 3D foam dots to mount my tail and give it some dimension. I use a lot of foam tape and foam dots, seriously, gobs of it, because I love the dimension it gives. So even though this is a simple card, it seems and feels more complex. It feels like it has more layers than it really does because of those pop-up elements. And I'm going to grab a piece of vellum. I actually took the sentiment from the mermaid tail and heat embossed that with the same VersaFine ink on this piece of vellum and trimmed it out with my tonic guillotine bypass trimmer. And then I'm going to do a fishtail banner end there and just cut a couple of slits there and boom, it's done. I love this tape. This this is by High and it has these gold foil speckles and it's one of my all-time favorite washi tapes. I use tons of this stuff. And I wanted to have a little accent down there under my sentiment. And then I'm gonna take that little banner and just fold it over so I can glue it down on the back side there. And I'll just use some tape runner for that. I've got a little crease line there so I know where to put my adhesive. And then it will fold around over the front and lay down nice and flat. So just some good tape runner. That one's by Thermoweb. I like it because of its compact size and it's a dotted pattern. I don't know why I dig it, but I dig it. <laughs> And it's a good adhesive. It's strong bonding. And then at this point, I was like, what? I didn't allow enough room for my shell. So I had to take it off like immediately and then refold it because I'd totally forgotten about those little shells I was going to put on the front. So I'm just going to redo that. Took it off. I know this happens when you're making cards, right? You change directions a little bit or you didn't quite nail it the first time. So you got to modify. <laughs> I'm the queen of modification. <laughs> So now I've got it in place. I like that. I'm going to anchor it down with a little bit of tape runner here behind the lettering where it probably won't show if at all. Yep, it doesn't show at all. And then it's going to be even further camouflaged when I use some uh, foam dots here. These are more of those little thin uh, 3D foam mounting squares. I like it because it adds dimension without adding too much bulk. And then I've, that's done. So now I'm going to take my tape runner and I'm only going to run some tape along the center back of that vertically. And the reason for that is sometimes I like to allow the edges of my watercolor paper to pop up. I think it gives an added dimension um, to the card instead of always flushing them uh, to the surface of the base card. So this is just a standard A2 four and a quarter by five and a half inch card made from some Nina 110 pound solar white. And then I'm just going to add just a tad more embellishment by using my stickles in gold to add some little spots here. I did highlight a couple of her scales. I don't want to completely obliterate all that gorgeous watercolor. So I just highlighted a couple of the scales and then added some down below on the shelves. And I think this is such a great card. And all you have to do is swap out the saying and you have all kinds of different things that you could do with this layout. All the supplies are available at ellenhudson.com. So you can click down below in the description box or visit the blog. And to see more of our papercraft videos, if you enjoy them, subscribe to our channel and click on the photos below. Thanks for watching.